What does trance mean to you? I know it sounds cheesy and it sounds cliche, but trance has been my life since the early 90s. You know, I, I was heavily, heavily grabbed by record labels like IQ, Heart House, uh, Platypus, Huge Tunes, Perfecto, you know, all the real, like, proper, pure trance labels from back in the day. Ever since that point, you know, 91, 92, right the way through till now, so it's been it's been my life for like the last 30 years without a shadow of a doubt. The world is about to end and you're putting on the last ever party. What would the lineup be? I think I'd have to group them together. So the first group of DJs I would have would be the guys that I was most influenced by back in the day in the, the kind of early 90s. Carl Cox, heard him for the first time in Radio 1 in 1992. Pete Tong. He was obviously, Carl was on Pete's radio show, so I used to like listen to Pete every single weekend. Judge Jules, Dave Pierce, so all the Radio 1 guys. Uh, the second group of guys I would have would be my own kind of personal favourite tech trans heroes. The BXR guys like Mauro Picotto, Mario Pugh, um, and also maybe Marcel Woods, Marco V. And then the third group of guys I would have would be my kind of friends in the scene and guys that I've performed with the most over the years, whether it's been like on my, on stage myself with other DJs and also as public domain. So you'd have James Allen, who I was did all the public domain stuff with, and also Malaka Lee, David Forbes, Trevor Riley, who was really heavily heavily influenced by back in the day, and also Neil Skinner, who joined public domain later on as well. So that, that would be the, the ultimate lineup for me. What is your greatest fear? I've had a few, like, like ever since lockdown, I've had a few anxiety dreams going on recently, like... I dreamt that I lost the taste in my mouth, and that was a that was a horrendous like thought. I woke up in a panic that I couldn't taste anything, and I ran downstairs to like drink some milk or drink some juice or something out of the fridge to make sure I hadn't lost my sense of taste. And I've also dreamt that I've lost my hearing before, and I was just I woke up in a really majorly cold sweat because I couldn't hear anything, and then my hearing came back. So that that was a Horrible, horrible fear. That's been a horrible fear for a long, long time. And I think another fear would be this, that, you know, the fear of going on stage to like a massive crowd and just everything goes completely like Pete Tong. Just nothing, nothing works. The spotlights are on you. You know, the sweat, like everything is just heating up and you've got beads of sweat in your brow. I think that's, that's the kind of biggest fear would just be like going on stage and completely losing it just completely flopping and, you know, things, people throwing things at you and getting booed off stage. That's a, That would be my, my biggest fear. What is your earliest memory? I can always remember my mum and dad taking me to, like, a, there was a guy in my local town that used to uh, restore, like, bikes. And I must have been, like, maybe three, four years old. And my mum and dad took us to this, to this guy and he had this big, I can remember it vividly, he had this big, massive shed and it was just full of all these bikes that he'd restored and repaired and stuff. And I just got this little gold bike. I can't remember what type it is. It was probably like a pile of crap, to be honest. But I can remember, vividly remember me having this gold bike and just being so, so happy with it. Have you ever said I love you and not meant it? Nah, that, that, that's that's not something you can say without meaning it. You know, def, definitely not. What is your guiltiest pleasure? I could sit down with a, a huge bag of Doritos, a big tub of salsa dip and a big massive bag of popcorn and you sit me down in front of a big massive cinema screen I can quite happily sit there the whole day and just eat crap and maybe I finish it off with a big tub of ice cream that would be my my absolute perfect <laughs> afternoon that, that would be my, my guilty's pleasure what's your all-time favorite movie it has to be Star Wars I'm a massive nerd I love my sci-fi films. Uh, I love like Interstellar and you know, all the kind of like recent kind of blockbusters you've had as well, you know, and then going back, you've got stuff like Blade Runner and all the big sci-fi films. But for me, I can remember being like a four or five year old boy when like Star Wars, uh, well, in fact, Star Wars came out in 77. So I was two years old when Star Wars came out. So maybe, yeah, I must have been like maybe five or six years old the first time I saw Star Wars and it just completely blew my mind. And if I had to pick the main Star Wars film, my absolute favourite Star Wars film, that would be Empire. The Empire Strikes Back. I, I cannot put into words how much I love Star Wars. If you could change one thing about the world, 
what would you change? I don't really want to get all political, but right now I just think there are far too many idiots in power. You know, some of the guys that are in power, you're just like, I'm watching the TV every day and I'm just like, where are, where are these idiots coming from? I would just do away with all of them and I would put one guy in charge of the planet. And that, if I had to choose that, that one guy, it would be David Attenborough. I just think he's an absolute legend. He's got his head screwed on. He cares about the world. He's highly intelligent. You know, yeah, that's that's definitely what I would change is like the leadership of countries just now. What's the most important lesson life has taught you? I think patience. You know, I, I used to, I mean, I, I can be impatient these days some with some things, but when I think to my, you know, my younger self, I just wanted everything to happen now. You know, I wanted success. I wanted things to happen overnight. I wanted to become a, a good producer. I wanted to become a good DJ. There was just, you know, all these things. I was just so uh, impatient. I just wanted everything to happen. You know, like now, I want it now. And I just, as the years have gone on, I've realised that, that that doesn't happen unless you slow things down pay more attention to your productions, pay more attention to, you know, taking a bit longer to achieve your goals, making sure you've got everything in place that can help you achieve your goals. So I would definitely say patience. I've, I've learned to become patient, which wasn't an easy thing to do, but I have done. In a film about your life, who would play you? Well, my two favourite actors are, well, two of them are Tom Hanks and Jim Carrey. I think if I was doing more of a kind of serious uh film Tom Hanks would definitely play me um, but I can be quite wacky you know I like to do impressions I like to make people laugh I like to be a bit silly and off the wall sometimes so I think Jim Carrey would be amazing to do that I think you know he just in fact Robin Williams could be a good one as well I've loved I've loved Robin Williams for years you know R.I.P. Robin but yeah, I think Jim Carrey or Robin Williams I think they would do a really good job you're only allowed one alcoholic drink for the rest of your life what would that drink be? That's a pretty easy one. I'd, I would say Jack Daniels. I've uh, I started drinking Jack Daniels when I when Public Domain kicked off for me back in the day. It was uh, my my good friend Malorca Lee. He introduced me to Jack back in the day, and I just I, I can remember drinking it for the first time and thinking, where where has this drink been all my life? You know, it was just one of these tastes I I, I absolutely loved from the first time I drank it. Obviously, I'm not drinking it every week, but you know, when I'm out when I'm out and about and I'm having a uh, a bit of a mad one in the house, you know, with my wife or my friends or whatever. Uh, Jack Daniels, Uncle Uncle Jack comes out to play. If you were an animal, what would you be? That's an easy one. A shark. Shark Mary. Nice and simple. Which track from your back catalogue defines you and your sound? I think my own kind of personal favourite within the, like within the last ten years is definitely the Pillars of Creation. I think that was, for me, that was a kind of perfect blend of where I'm at with my sound and just overall, you know. Obviously, I'm known for tech trance. I absolutely love, like, techie beats and spending time in my grooves and just getting really crispy and crunchy percussion. But in the breakdown of Pillars of Creation, it's all about the big, epic kind of hands-in-the-air melodies that give you the chills and the, gets the hair in the back of the neck going. You know, for me, that's that's exactly what tech trance is all about you've got the techno elements you know techie percussion techie stabs but you've also got the trance elements and the breakdown the big soaring synths big massive uh, euphoric moments so definitely pillars of creation when did you last cry and why i've actually cried a couple of times just within the last few weeks and it was when we first went into lockdown I didn't, I didn't really feel worried about lockdown at first, you know, I was obviously worried about my own health and my wife's health and my mum and dad because they're both quite el elderly now and I suppose I got all this kind of, this emotion had built up over maybe like two weeks and then the first time me and my wife Karen, we went out onto our front doorstep and we like clapped for the NHS and my, my eyes just, you know, it just all this tension and emotion just came out completely out of nowhere. I didn't realise how how uptight and emotional I was about the whole lockdown thing and being worried about the pandemic and the virus. Um, but that 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 kind of that caught me off guard, and uh, I've also just done a remix of Kieran McCauley and Claire Stagg, a track they've done called "All I Want." And even though I got that track finished before the lockdown, 
I played it in one of my live stream DJ sets, just uh, the first one I did was three weeks ago. And when I played that track, the vocals and the breakdown, like Claire's uh, amazing vocals just really caught me off guard. And I could just feel the tears like welling up in my eyes. And yeah, I wasn't full blown crying, but I, I got really emotional when I played that track. So there's, there's two times, that's twice I've cried in the last few weeks. If you weren't a DJ producer, what would you be? Probably about 15, 16, well maybe 14, 15 years ago, I actually looked into being a fireman. I've always wanted to be a fireman from, even just from being a little boy, you know, even been asked in school by your teacher, what do you want to be? I always wanted to be a fireman. Um, it's just something I can't really explain. I'm just, it's something that I would, I'd really love to do. And, you know, if my DJing hadn't kind of taken off the way it did, I think maybe, you know, 14, 15 years ago, it, it would have been my career choice because it's something I've always kind of leaned towards. What is your favourite country to travel in? That's an easy one. The last few years, you know, America and Canada have just completely blown my mind. The, scenes over, the scene over there is just, it's, for me, it's unbeatable just now. I've had so many good, like, good gigs in LA, New York, Montreal, Toronto, uh, Seattle, uh, you know, there's just yeah, too, too many to mention. I think the whole of America and Canada for me right now is just, you know, really on fire. Um, it's just a shame that the, the, the lockdown has kicked in just now because I had so many really good gigs lined up this year. It's been quite heartbreaking watching my gig diary be decimated over the last few weeks, you know, and but I'll be back. I'll definitely be back and I, I cannot wait to come back to America and Canada. What are my top three trance tracks of all time? Such an easy one for me. My absolute favourite number one trance record is the Matt Dairy vs Red Jerry mix of West Bam, Wizards of the Sonic. Incredible, incredible, incredible. It just gives me chills every time I hear it. I've had so many good nights, not just like playing, but you know, being with friends, I've been out clubbing and it's come on and it's just... It blows my mind every time I hear it. Matt, Matt Dairy knows this. I've told him so many times. Uh, so that's definitely my number one. My number two, Rich will be happy to hear this, but it's Solar Stone, uh, Seven Cities, the V1 remix. The V1 mix for me is just the, the most the energetic, powerful mix that just, again, I've had so many good nights out hearing that track and like so many DJ sets where I've played it. And it just lifts the roof off the place. I absolutely love that track. My third choice is one that's not quite as obvious, but it's a track that's loved by a lot of people, including myself, and that's Rod Weiler, Life Signs. Um, it came out on one of the Huge Tunes side labels. I think it was, uh, was it Bana Top Banana or something like that. It's quite an obscure label that came out back in the day. And again, you know, it's one of these tracks that just brings back so many memories. The, the riff and the breakdown's amazing. The chords, just the way it all builds up in the breakdown, uh, you know, the kick drum, the bass line, the, the sounds, the just the, all the kind of effects and stuff through it. It's a, it's a masterpiece. So West Bam, Solar Stone and Rod Weiler, that's my definite top three. What is one thing coming up in your schedule that you're most excited about? I'm actually, we're right bang in the middle of compiling the tracks for Prism Volume 3, which is a compilation album that I put out through my own Outburst Records label and it's also distributed by Black Hole. And disc one, you've got myself. Disc two, you've got Scott Project. And disc three is my good friend, David Forbes. So we're really, really excited. It's going to be a really good compilation album. And we're just in the middle of getting it all organised just now. There's some killer tracks on there. A good mix of techno, tech trance, like slow tech trance, fast tech trance. A little bit of psy, a little bit of tech psy. There's a lot of good stuff on there. And obviously hard trance is covered as well by, by the main man, Frank. It's Mr. Scott Project, so it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be really, really good. A final message for the dedicated trans fans on Transportal. We'll get through this lockdown. Whatever you've got in mind, whatever's stressing you out, you know, the things that you can't do, like myself, I, I can't go to the studio just now. I've got to stay home. I've got to isolate. I'm telling my mum and dad to stay home. They've to isolate. This, this will pass. Things will return to normal. So whatever you do, Please don't be crazy. Don't be going out visiting people you shouldn't be going to see. Stay at home. Get your, you know, make yourself busy at home. Just find projects to do, whether it's DIY or gardening or, you know, sorting out your hard drives and your, your laptop or your PC, whatever. Just please stay at home. 
stay safe and I'll see you all again on the dance floor very, very soon. And I'd just like to thank John Askew for asking me to do this interview. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot.